Okay, so this lecture is over what is called stereo isomers. Um, so if we take a um, molecule like PtCl2 NH32, so a platinum, it's going to be a square planar molecule. So it's got a platinum with two chlorines attached and two ammonia molecules attached. So that would be uh, this molecule, where yellow is chlorine, for example, and green is NH3 molecules. So there's actually another molecule that we could draw that has two chlorines attached and two ammonia molecules attached. And that would be that, where the two chlorines could be 180 degrees apart and the two ammonias could be 180 degrees apart. Or we could have that, where the two chlorines are 90 degrees apart and the two ammonias are 90 degrees apart. So it's still platinum with two chlorines and two ammonias, so all of the same atoms <clears throat> attached geometrically um, square planar, uh, but the molecules obviously differ from each other. So these two molecules are what are known as stereoisomers of each other. So stereoisomers are molecules that differ only in their three-dimensional shape. They have the same elements, same atoms, same number of each element attached in the same order. So it's Platinum or chlorine, platinum, chlorine, ammonia, platinum, ammonia, right? Chlorine, platinum, chlorine, ammonia, platinum, ammonia, same order, but they differ spatially. And this is a very important concept in chemistry. Uh, so, for example, this molecule, this molecule is called cis platinum. And this molecule is called trans-platinum. So molecules that differ spatially can have very different biological properties. So in this case, cis-platinum is an anti-cancer pharmaceutical agent. Uh, whereas transplatin has no anti-cancer properties. So just the three-dimensional shape of a molecule has huge effect on its biological properties. Uh, so it can have uh, effect on their physical properties as well. So cisplatinum, for example, um, so is an orange yellow in color, uh, whereas transplatinum is pale yellow in color, and only 0.037 grams of this dissolves in 100 grams of water, uh, whereas 0.252 grams of this will dissolve in 100 grams of water. So they, in this case, they have different physical properties as well. So if we take another example of this, so if we take this, so a carbon um, with four different things attached, like bromine, let's say chlorine, doesn't matter what the four things are, hydrogen, and iodine, for example. So if we took that molecule, <clears throat> so let's call the bromine the white atom, the chlorine the orange atom, the hydrogen, the blue atom, and the <clears throat> iodine, the yellow atom. So if we take that molecule and this molecule, so same four atoms attached on the carbons, right? Each carbon's got a white, a blue, orange, and a yellow atom attached. These two molecules, however, are not the same spatially. So we can make the 
white and the yellow match, for example, but then the orange and the blue doesn't match. And if we make the orange and the blue match, right, then the yellow and the white doesn't match. Or if we make the white and the blue match, then the orange and the yellow doesn't match. So whatever we do, it doesn't matter how we rotate this molecule in space, we can line up two atoms, whichever atoms you want to line up, doesn't matter. The other two atoms are never going to match because these two molecules are different. So these two molecules have the same atoms attached in the same order, but they differ spatially as well. So this is another example of stereoisomers. So if we drew this molecule and the other molecule, So if you notice, these two molecules have a mirror plane between them. So if there's a mirror here, then this molecule reflects into this mirror. So blue reflects to blue, orange to orange, white to white, and yellow to yellow. So molecules that are mirror images of each other, but non superimposable of e to each other. So these molecules are mirror images. So mirror images but non-superimposable, and those type of molecules are stereoisomers. So there are type of stereoisomers called enantiomers. And so for those of you who are going to organic chemistry, um, this is a huge concept in organic chemistry. There's an entire chapter in organic chemistry, one, devoted to stereoisomers. Uh, again, because one reason, because they can have huge biological consequences. If this is a pharmaceutical agent, for example, maybe this one is useful, has some type of useful physiological properties. Uh, it's mirror image, could be toxic or deadly, or it could simply have no biological effect whatsoever. And so that's all that we're going to say about stereoisomers in, in this class. Um, just have to recognize stereoisomers are molecules that are non, that are, um, they differ spatially. And for those of you going to organic chemistry, you'll have to learn a whole lot more about stereoisomers in that class.